All right, so I've basically defined our triangle with the gravity, the normal force, and the acceleration. I talked to Dr. Marcano, and he said that it's a good idea to create a frame of reference, which I, my frame of reference that I created earlier in our session was uh, y is up, x is over, which makes sense, right? Well, it's actually better to use x as the direction of our slope. So it's a little bit different, uh, but not much. Basically, it's going to be this is our x direction, and this, the same way the normal force is going, is our y direction. Okay, And the reason we do that is to create a uh, gravitational frame of reference for the x gravi gravity, basically, and the y component of gravity, um, which in this case is obviously the y component is going to be in the y direction, and the x component is going to be in the x direction, which is those triangles that we were talking about. Okay. So I have two triangles drawn here. Um, you might not be able to see them great, but uh, they're basically, I just extended the normal force down a little bit, and I extended from the block down a little bit like this, and created, and with the line G cutting through them, it creates two, a square, or a rectangle, with two triangles. Turns out that the small angle of these triangles is theta, just like for our big triangle. So, uh, I have this rectangle with the angles theta, they're 90 degree, it's a 90 degree triangle, the other angle is unknown, and we don't really care about it. So, if I redraw the triangles like I did, I'm going to have, let's say, here's a triangle, okay, where G is always our hypotenuse, and theta is our small angle, and in this case, here, our force in the x direction is the small small side of the triangle, um, and this is facing this way. It's facing this way. Anyway, so what do we have? We have sine theta equals opposite fx over hypotenuse. So, and it's actually not just G, it's mg, because we're talking about forces, and G is our acceleration, m is our mass, put them together, it's a force. So it's not just G, it's mg, which we already knew. If I rearrange this equation, okay, over here, you're going to get f of x equals mg sine theta. f of x equals mg sine theta. This is very similar to what we got in our session earlier. The fact is, we, but it's not the same. What we got earlier is not the correct formulation. Uh, this is the correct formula for our force in our x direction. Okay, And I'm going to square it off. And then we can think about force in our y direction. right? But with our frame of reference we built, there's no movement in the y direction. There's no, the block is sitting, and it doesn't go vertical or uh, vertical in either direction. It's only going, uh, in this case, down this way. <laughs> so basically, what's happening is we only have a x component of force, which we already just calculated. So the y component of force, we can calculate. It would be, in this case, mg cosine theta instead of sine theta. And you, that's just because we're now considering the opposite way. Uh, sine theta and cosine theta t are typically known to be equal to x and y, uh, respectively. So now that we have our force, we can find out our acceleration the same way I did it before. You remember, I said this is force, mg sine theta. And then what does that equal? f equals ma. So, you divide M on both sides, and you get A, whoa, it's a weird looking A, you get A equals G sine theta, which
which again is close to what we got before, but a, I, I did mine just, I set it up a little bit wrong, and this is the more correct way. So this is our acceleration, and now we need to find, that's part A, okay? And now we need to find the, initial, or the final velocity. Now, I tried showing you that basically I could do some calculus and turn it into a differential equation, separate it, and then I tried integrating. And uh, it turns out that's not exactly necessary, which is good because that's a little too much. And remember, we were having this problem with t. Um, more accurately, I still did use this integration. Um, it's that in order to solve for t, which is what I couldn't figure out, uh, we use the kinematic equation, as Marcano put it, of the, uh, it's like the projectile velocity, or the projectile motion equation, and it looks like this. Um, x equals x naught plus v naught t plus a naught divided by 2 t squared. I don't know if you can see that, but I think you've seen this equation before. It's the very common one, and I think it describes projectile motion and just, uh, typical motion in general for constant uh, acceleration. And this, in the gravitational field, is constant acceleration, which is perfect, okay? Uh, and what you see here is, it has terms initial position, initial velocity, and acceleration, the, or the average acceleration. So we know that our initial position is zero, and our initial velocity is zero, so both of those terms uh, go away. And what we're left with is basically x equals a over 2, a divided by 2, t squared. Again, I hope you can see that. x equals a divided by 2, t squared. Where this t is any time t during the motion. And what are we interested? t final. Let me back up and uh, calculate for, or build the equation that gives us, has t final inside of it. This is what we did earlier. It has had to do with the integration, and I hope that you can follow along. So we're going to pause on this, just for two seconds, and we're going to go back to acceleration equals g sine theta. And I told you earlier that acceleration equals dv dt, okay, which equals g sine theta, okay? If you will allow it, we have, we're going to multiply by dt on both sides, so we're going to have dv equals g sine theta dt, okay? And then we're going to integrate it. Now remember, don't get scared about the integration because it's, uh, you're integrating from a constant, so the integration is always just the variable, okay? From the integration of 1 is the variable that you're integrating with respect to. In this case, we, ha we are integrating with respect to velocity and time. On our left-hand side is velocity, and we know that it is uh, the v final minus v initial, which again I showed you earlier. Because um, the integral is v, and that's from v final to v initial. Now that's the left-hand side. The right-hand side is going to be g sine theta, which is a constant in this case, because none of it is has to do with time, times t. This is, uh, it's going to be g sine theta multiplied by t final minus t initial, okay? Again, we went over this. We know that v initial and t initial are both zero. So that gives us, run out of room, it gives us v final equals g sine theta t final. Okay? That's a t. I hope it looks like a t. And now all we have to do is find out t final. Well, what did I just tell you? That, uh, well, sorry, didn't mean to say it like that. 
we have an equation for t up here. And t final is going to be equal to when x is at 2 meters, because the distance of this is 2 meters. So it needs to travel the full 2 meter meters to reach t final. So distance equals velocity times time. We went over this, and that means that time equals distance over velocity. Okay? So, or we don't even really need to worry about that because we have an equation for time right here. And this equation for time, we're going to rearrange it for t. So, if I rearrange it, okay, you divide by a over 2, and you get something like this t squared equals 2x over a. Now you just take the square root, and t equals the square root of 2x over a. Okay? What is a? a is g sine theta. So t equals square root of 2x over, and x in this case is the distance here to here. Um, and in our case, it's going to be 2 meters for the final time over g sine theta. Okay? Now, if I put t final into our equation for v final, okay, we're going to get, okay, I know I'm all over the place, but that's why I made a video. You can see everything. Um, v final equals g sine theta t final, where t final equals 2x g sine theta over g sine theta. If I put these together, I get something that looks like this. g sine theta square root 2x g sine theta. And uh, you, I have a g sine theta here, and I have a g sine theta inside the radical as well. And basically what that means is I can put this g sine theta inside here because, let me write it right here, g sine theta, and this will make a lot of sense, it's pretty, g sine theta equals the square root of g squared sine theta squared. That makes sense, right? Well, if we put that here, we're basically going to come up with something that looks like this, square root of 2x g sine theta. And maybe you can figure that out on your own, but I pretty much did it right here. It's going to be g squared oh, sine squared theta divided by times 2 divided by g sine theta. So that just gives you 1, g sine theta. Um, and, now, and that's it. This is the final answer. I hope it helps. Next, I'm going to try to do one of your pulley ones, and uh, once I do, I should be able to send you that too. But all right. Sorry for how long this video is.